are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Making notes on cue cards. Hello there, my name is Ben Worthington. In this tutorial, we are going to specifically focus on your IELTS speaking part two cue card strategy. Let's jump straight into it. Now, a lot of IELTS teachers say to their students, write as much as possible. And I've seen with my own eyes that this can be quite a disastrous strategy because we have to bear in mind that it's about the quality of your words, not the quantity. Now, in a recent episode where I was appearing as a guest for another podcast, there was a student who sent in a question and the question kept on talking about, well, not kept on, it just mentioned that this student descended into rambling, especially in the part two and the part three. And they descended into rambling because they kept on going and going and going and going. And this is disastrous. And I also have a student who took advantage of the intensive speaking course, and I was working with her just, just yesterday, actually. And she had a similar sort of like not illness, but a similar issue. Yep, she just kept on going and going and going. And she needs to pass IELTS pretty soon because she wants to take her whole family out of Saudi Arabia and take them to Australia. And the clock is clicking. That means, you know, there's a countdown there and there's an, a cutoff point regarding the age and unless she passes the IELTS pretty soon, then she's going to miss this window of opportunity. And I'll tell you later on how we managed to solve this because she'd already taken IELTS numerous times, but with the speaking, it was really holding her back. And in a few minutes, I'll tell you the strategy I gave to her. So the key points, what I'm going to cover in this podcast are how to understand the cue card, how to develop your ideas, and how to expand your questions and answers. And then I will share the strategy that I gave to Safinas about how she can start basically limiting her answers instead of going on and on and on and cre creating more grammatical mistakes. And, and in her case, going off topic in, in a few cases because she kept on talking. Right then, number one, understand the cue card that you're given. So look at the structure and you'll see it's probably divided into three or four parts. Okay, so talk about an older person you admire. You should say who this person is, how long you have known him or her, what qualities he or she has, and why you admire him or her. So part one, the topic, what is the topic here? Well, in this case, it's an older person you admire. Other topics could be a book, a film, a meal, a place, a memory. And most of these topics, well, not most, a lot of them are connected to people. So it's very important that we know some good vocabulary regarding describing people. Okay. Also remember that it's not going to be, it's not always going to be a general topic or an academic topic because um, it's not really a test of your knowledge. It's usually going to be something personal to you, something you have done, 
someone you know or somewhere you have been. Okay, so it's quite personal. Now, part two, describing the topic, who this person is. Let's just review those three questions or three bullet points. Who this person is, how long you've known him or her, what qualities he or she has. So in this part of the question, they're going to be usually asking what, when, who, or where. And they require, you to, they require you to give detailed information about this, these points. Now, what I see what is a very common mistake is that students might just simply answer these questions and after about 30 seconds, they run dry. There's nothing else to say, yeah? And the other extreme, this is what was happening with staffiness before, yeah, is that they just keep on talking and talking and talking and eventually get way off topic. And usually what I find with this type, with this type of student is that they know that they've kind of gone over but they don't really know when to stop because there's no real indication. So we'll, we can solve that in a few minutes. Now, as I said before, if we just do the 30 second one, who this person is, this person is my uncle. I've known him since I was about three years old, I think. The qualities he has are that he is very kind, he's very sociable, he's very athletic, and he's very close to me. Oof, what a disaster, what an absolute disaster. It's all over Range Rover in a matter of 30 seconds. So we definitely don't want to do that. Now, let's have a look at part three of our tutorial, answering the how and the why question. Now, this is, the, this is often the hardest part because explaining is usually more difficult than describing. So you have to explain why you admire him or her. So this part gives you the opportunity to say more. Um, the explanations are usually longer than descriptions and of course they're probably a little bit harder. So how are we going to achieve a high band score? So you understand the cue card. What's the next step? Okay, the next step is what a lot of students do is that they write their answer out one by one. Okay, um, they write it out word by word. This is not good because then you're going to basically read it as though it's a script. And this is terrible. Okay, because one, you're not only going to sound unnatural, Two, once your script runs out, and it probably will run out, um, it's going to be difficult to like freestyle, to, f to start freelancing, so to speak, to start inventing on the spot. So what I am going to suggest is that you start making notes, okay, and start going for Let's see, start going for phrases, okay? Phrases that jump, that come to mind when you're describing this person or explaining why you admire this person. So if we're looking for phrases, okay? And be careful, I'm saying phrases, not words. Students who write happy, um, for example, they're describing a person, explaining why they like them happy, nice, um, fun, generous. Mm, that's not terrible, but we're not going to get the high point. We're not going to be scoring around band seven with those kinds of phrases. Whereas if we use phrases such as a born leader, entrepreneurial skill, determined, charismatic, charming, well-respected, inspirational, 
a positive role model. Can you see? These phrases are almost collocations, and you know from listening to past episodes that collocations are very, very useful because they help you sound more natural. So I would encourage you to start using more detailed notes. Another reason why we should just not write down words and we should go for more detailed phrases is because if we go back to the cue card and it says how long you've known him, or uh, your answer is I've known him for nine years, or for 12 years, whatever it is, we're not going to really impress the examiner. However, if we use discourse markers, which is another podcast that will be re released soon. But if we use discourse markers, we can say something like, I'm not entirely sure when we first met. It could have been about seven years ago. Yes, I think that's right. It was seven years ago when we were both playing football for the school team. This is much more longer. It contains um, complex language, which you need for a 6.5 or above. And it's much more detailed. There's almost a little story in there. So your notes, if that was the kind of answer, you could have said, going back to your cue card notes, we could have said, I'm not entirely sure. It could have been. We were both playing football. Yeah? And that's just like a very brief overview. But from that, now you've got like a springboard to give a very full, complete, rich answer. Just a side note here, that the IELTS speaking is not a test of knowledge. It's your test, it's your opportunity to communicate. And as I said on another podcast when I was doing a guest, but as a guest, if you can go in there charismatic, confident, then all of this is going to be easier. And we don't want to go in with the level of communication we use with our friends. We want to be thinking of this as a job interview and we want to be confident, we want to be clear and we want to be speaking almost the same way you would in your native language. Okay, when you're talking with somebody and they ask how long you've known him, for example, you wouldn't say, I've known him for six years. No, you'd go deeper, you'd go wider, give the context, some details in there, the football team. Tell them if you're not sure how long you've known them. Yeah, so this is how you will, this is one step you can take to start sounding more natural. As you've probably heard, there is a reason question. This might be, you can identify this because it'll start with how or why. This is probably the most difficult part. Going back to our cue card, we have the why you admire him or her. Now the strategy, what I'm going to give you is that if we go back to the notes that we have written down and we, the notes we had, um, we had like well-respected, charismatic, entrepreneurial skill, a born leader, um, extremely generous, all these lovely collocations. What we're going to do is probably expand on these a little bit more. Okay, so I'll give you a quick overview of how I would answer this. Right. Well, the person that I'm going to talk about today is my friend, Mike. He's a very close friend of mine and someone I admire greatly. Can you see? I've added, some, I'm adding some extra detail. Yeah, I've told the person, I've told the examiner, he's a close friend. I admire him greatly. Moving on. I'm not entirely sure when we met. Could have been about seven years ago. Yeah, that's right. It was when we were both playing football for the school team. Once again, as I mentioned before, we're going into more detail. I'm not saying I've known him for six years because I am a robot. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'm telling the examiner a bit of backstory there. Next one. We're both mad about football. 
So it was this shared love of the sport that got us talking. Brackets, I'm just adding some extra detail about our friendship. Next one. Since leaving school, Mike has set up his own company and has become a very wealthy man. He is a born leader. Brackets. Now I'm going to start talking about the qualities. And notice, I'm using these collocations of born leader. Back to the topic. Back to the, my presentation. You could see this when he was younger. He was the captain of the football team and head boy in our year. Brackets, I'm still adding more detail here. So it's hardly surprising that he's now running his own company. Another reason though is his entrepreneurial skill. I'm talking about his additional qualities. I'm adding more detail and I'm using collocations to explain this extra detail. He set up an online company with very little money. He doesn't have a billionaire father like Donald Trump. And at first he faced a lot of difficulties, but he was very determined. Another quality there. And his determination paid off. And now he has an incredibly successful company. Now, what I just did there was I added another word from the same word family to show the examiner my flexible use of language. So I'll just go back and say that again. At first he faced a lot of difficulties, but he was very determined. And his determination paid off because now he has an incredible successful company. So how could you expand your collocations or your word list using words from the same family from the same word family to show your examiner that you have flexible use of the language just to plant a seed there okay now before we finish let me finish my talk and then i'll tell you about what safina says so in addition to his skills he has great qualities such as charisma and charm more qualities he is the most charming and charismatic. Once again, I've used words from the same word family. Charisma, charm. No. Yeah, charisma, charm, charming and charismatic. You see? I'm expanding them. Let's go. So he is the most charming and charismatic man I've ever met. Hmm. Why do I admire him? Well, there's a number of reasons. So what I just did there is I'm focusing back on the cue card. Okay, so I'm reminding myself and I'm asking, I'm reminding myself to keep on topic and I'm giving myself some extra thinking time. So it's a useful way to remind yourself and keep yourself on topic. So back, let's rewind. Why do I admire him? Firstly, He's a well-respected businessman and has gained the respect of his employees. Moreover, moreover, setting up a business in a recession is also inspirational and the fact that he never gave up despite some difficulties in the early period. So let me just go back. There's a few points there that I think will help you. First, I used firstly, okay? This will help me with cohesion and coherence. Okay, so I'm sequencing it firstly. Yeah. Also, later on in the sentence, uh, in the next sentence, I used moreover. Perhaps it might be a little bit too formal, but I've on, I'm only using it once and I'm not jumbling it with a load of other very formal words. Okay, so, but it does help with my cohesion and coherence, Scott. So let's go back to this. Moreover, setting up a business in a recession is also inspirational and the fact that he never gave up despite some difficulties in the early period makes him such a positive role model. I'm not sure if I'll be able to achieve what he has in such a short time, but he has inspired me to try so you can see why I have so much admiration for him. So. Hopefully you will have heard and picked out those useful phrases uh, that I had in my notes. 
we can expand these and we can use words from the same word family to show flexibility and also we avoid sounding like a robot because we've got our words in front of us and we're going to just use these as our guide also if we find ourselves rambling or going off topic we're going to go back to the question and we could even just ask the question aloud just to keep ourselves on topic and give ourselves some thinking times thinking time now just going back to my student uh, Safinas who was doing the intensive speaking with me whenever I asked her a part three question she would always go on and on and on okay and we needed a way to contain these answers because if not as I mentioned it would be on and on and on and dangerously we would go off topic and obviously the more time you sp you're, you're speaking for the more chance you will commit a mistake so the quick strategy I gave to her was one identify the tense reflect that back in the answer two explain why give a reason why sorry explain your point then explain why and then finish okay and no then give an example and then finish so let me just go over that again one reflect the answer not exactly word for word but reflect it identify the tense reflect it back and elaborate on it a little bit with a discourse marker number two give a point number three back that point up with a because and then possibly given an example and then round it up and finish and just following that structure helps helped her significantly deliver more controlled answers so that's it for me today now the next step if you want to take it further is to go to ieltspodcast.com and sign up to our newsletter we send tutorials new publications sometimes competitions sometimes discount codes and it's a lot of fun so you can go there sign up and if you're in a bit of a rush and you need to pass soon have a look at the online courses now one last thing that i think uh, which would be very helpful for you to do if you've enjoyed this podcast perhaps leave us a review on itunes and also if you've enjoyed this please think of a person who you think would benefit from listening to these types of tutorials and help and guidance and motivation and then perhaps send them a link and get them on board and we can help help and we can help more people pass IELTS Okay, have a great day and thank you for listening. Thanks for listening to IELTSPodcast.com.